Belair, what I gotta do? Can I believe? Take a melody, make it relevant, hold a harmony hostage to these people, army verses, stash the arms in the churches, bombs in the purses. Just when you think it's calm on the surface, we bomb on first. I can talk get nervous every verse. Revolutionary curse words, first calm, first surge. It ain't no lost love. Freedom calls blood, that's word to the moth word, nigga. Uh, Starbucks workers around the country earn a poverty wage depending on where you are, six, seven, eight dollars an hour. We've had a lot of problems with the way that we've been treated and the pay rate that we have, a lot of discrimination. It's pretty bad. Seven seventy-five an hour wasn't doing it. Many workers have bills to pay and they don't want to be the working poor forever. We deserve a fair share. At Starbucks, there's there's a real issue with the the number of hours and the the consistency of hours that workers are are assigned or permitted to to get. Um, every single worker at Starbucks who is not a system manager or a manager is a mandatory part-time employee, which means that we are never given more than 40 hours a week. We're never given 40 hours a week, and on top of that, if we go into overtime. Um, it's a it's a disciplinary offense. We can we can receive a write up for that. So we're supposed to um, have to police our own hours and, and make sure that we don't exceed that number. Um, this is an incredibly uh, widespread issue at Starbucks. Not only the the amount of hours that we get each week, but the consistency week to week. You can have 30 one week, 15 the next week. When it comes down to paying your bills at the end of the month, you really don't know how much money you're going to have in your bank account. Get to the game, get it off the chain. And then, of course, there's the big lie. The big lie is the Starbucks healthcare message. Now, if you stop many people on the street outside here, you say, well, you know, at least they have healthcare. The wage might not be right, but at least they have healthcare. So healthcare at Starbucks um, <clears throat> is another major league myth that they have been very successful in perpetuating through their PR campaign. A lot of times customers will come up to us and say, oh, you know, you're working late on a Saturday, that sucks. But at least you guys get free health care, right? And, you know, we'll all just sort of laugh because that is absolutely not the fact. If we maintain an average of 20 hours per week every quarter, we have the ability to qualify for purchasing the company's health plan. Um, maintaining 20 hours a week is actually no small feat for some Starbucks workers, but for those of us that do, we do not receive it for free. We have to pay for it. And actually, very recently, as a result of uh, the union pressure and um, the, the Starbucks workers union demanding for the figure to be released, it was finally released that um, only 43% of Starbucks employees choose to purchase the company's health, uh, health plan. Um, it's the number is 47% for Walmart, just to give you a little bit of a, a relative statistic there. And the 43% for Starbucks employees includes assistant managers and managers. So if you're looking at the statistic for baristas, shift supervisors, and bussers, that statistic has to be less because managers and assistant managers have far more consistency in hours and receive a far higher wage, so meaning that they uh, have better ability to pay for the company's health care. Our pockets become empty until we throw up picket lines. Isn't that so true? In May 2004, workers at uh, the 36th Street and Madison Avenue location um, declared their membership with the Industrial Workers of the World. We got union cards together, we got them signed, we took them to the National Labor Relations Board and filed a petition, and we talked to workers about our union in the store to the other workers and they were with it they decided to join the IWW local 660 and that's how it came about on uh, November 18 2005 we had uh, several of our co-workers several of me and my co-workers we marched in here walked over to our boss and handed him a letter with several demands on it uh, including higher wages better staffing and pretty much demand and demanding that our jobs work for us and not just for higher profits for the company. I joined the union because um, I think there are a lot of things that we need to change. Uh, mostly 
because of uh, the discrimination and uh, uh, the cutting of wages and uh, health care. We need a better, better health plan. Uh, and then one week later, we had a huge demonstration out here. We had about 50 people throughout the day, leafleting and picketing, and pretty much showing the company that we're not going to just stand by as we live in poverty and these companies make millions off our labor. He took everything they owned and yet still demanded more. He did a bloody good job. After the election idea fell through, were bribed to not be in the union. Starbucks had uh, anti-union busting campaigns. They had a guy dress up as a manager and come to the store, say he was a manager. And uh, he would buy the workers pizza, he would give out Mets tickets and gym passes. We were getting pizza on an everyday basis at the time. And uh, they were threatening workers that they could lose their jobs if they joined the union. Benefits will be taken away, union dues will have to be paid. A bunch of phony baloney that were given all the workers at 36 in Madison. Ever since we came out, they always, you know, pick on us for any little thing. They want to enforce rules that have never been enforced before. The man in the big mansion makes the pay stubs out to retail slaves. The yuppie dream became our nightmare. We're not in the business of filling bellies. We're in the business of filling souls. Oh, now, come That's, on. No, no, wait a minute. That's no. too, but this is a company. This is a corporation. Okay, come on. it is a corporation. You're blowing smoke now. No, I mean, this is how we feel. You might say, okay, they're full of crap and, and, you know, this is how we feel. We're in the business of human connection and humanity, creating communities in a third place between home and work. You're buying into a dream that isn't your own. Uh, Sarah Bender was laid off because of union activity. I was laid off because of union activity. Pete Montebalo had some problems because of union activity. Joe Agins was laid off because of union activity. And um, they said I got laid off because of line voids and shortages of the till, which were totally untrue and probably rigged on the computer by the managers and management. Um, shortly after I was hired, um, I had a, through a Halloween party where I invited a lot of different friends and some coworkers and workers from other stores. And right after that, I was identified as being a union supporter. And I know this because they are interrogating a lot of my coworkers behind my back. Um, and what ended up happening is they packed my file um, with disciplinary infractions that they wouldn't have otherwise given to other people. And um, May of 2005, I was eventually uh, fired for a supposed $6 cash mishandling. Um, which we know is bogus. They started um, harassing us for wearing our pants and uh, trying to increase these uh, rules that they never did, like her uh, dress code and um, stuff that you know they never talked about until we decided to join the union. Also happened to me is that Starbucks has discriminated me towards me because of my pentagram that I wear. Um, ever since I joined the union, they told me I can't wear it. I've been wearing it for four years. Nobody's ever said anything before. Um, my pentagram is very important to me, so for them to tell me to take it off, was, I felt discriminated against. Um, they told me I could have to wear it under my shirt or take it off. I got sent home twice for it. The first time I got sent home, um, Tomer took, um, took my pentagram and put it on, and he also got sent home, which showed solidarity between us. As soon as she was with the union, all of a sudden they told her that she couldn't wear this pin because one, one point it was because it was a, a religious symbol, another point because it was just too distracting or too big. Um, so right away we were just like, this is totally discrimination both because she's a Wiccan, and if, if it was a cross, you probably wouldn't be saying this, and also because she's now in the union. Um, and as soon as we started crying, like, religious discrimination, I think it was a PR nightmare for them. We did some flyering that also got the managers pissed off, and a lot of customers found out about it. A dog says into a grapple trumpet, waste for his call to action, mute and obedient, standing to attention! Um, the, our case that we had been 
continuously filing unfair labor practices of all this. And it finally went to trial, and surprisingly, Starbucks settled the case on the first day, um, meaning that we basically won all the things we were asking for, which was my job back, Anthony's job back, um, the right to wear union pins on the clock, which is, is our federal right, but this is something that they were um, sending people home for. Um, we also are now able to talk to workers about the union off of work time and distribute them literature. Um, and yeah, this was something that was, we expected it to be a long drawn out battle in the courtroom and obviously they knew they were going to lose and were afraid of bad press and maybe other things coming to light that they didn't want the public to know about. Since we organized, since we let them know we're a union with our demands, we've been getting the unofficial guaranteed hours. Every single person in the union has been getting at least 30 hours and it makes our life a lot easier when we don't have to scrap for shifts. I was going through a tough time in the union when they did all that. We did that together. It was, it was good for all of us financially. We won three wage increases from our organizing on the shop floor in the community. We have now, for union members, much more secure hours. We're generally getting the hours we want. And we've also made some modest safety improvements in the area of repetitive strain uh, injury. So the message is that organizing works. It's powerful, yeah. despite what the right wing wants us to believe. The union actually helps out. It's not like all those other business unions that, like, it's all about paying your dues and you got to go through all these people. Like, the union's kind of like your family. Like, you get to know everybody. And it's like whenever I have a problem, they're always there. And we really stick together and we try our best. Being, uh, being part of this union, you know what it means? It means, uh, means job security. They're afraid of us because they know that we got power as a group and that we're going to stick together. That means a lot to us. I mean, security. And it's going to mean higher wages, and it's going to mean a much better work environment and much better lives for all of us. What we're trying to do here is more than just get higher wages or get consistent scheduling. It's really about um, fighting for a better life, both on and off the job. And I advise all the workers that are not with the union to step up and join the union, because it will be a good decision for them, and not to be intimidated by management. It's up to them. If they would like to ju join the union, they could at any time. Um, and, you know, right now there are a lot of Starbucks workers involved, but this is really, for me, I see it as what are the jobs out there now? A lot of them are retail and food service, and why are we expecting such low, tr such poor treatment? Um, you know, we're all working hard. We're not bad people because we work these jobs, and I think we deserve a good life from it. So um, certainly if you're interested in making your life better, um, get involved, get in contact with us, starbucksunion.org, um, yeah, or iww.org. Okay.